morning everyone we'll get started in just a few minutes i'm trying to finish my setup so have patience with me and um, if you could leave me a comment to uh, let me know if you can see and hear me okay i will really appreciate it you should have access to the live chat Let me know where you're all watching from and what what time you have. It's I'm in Houston, so it's almost ten o'clock here. Beautiful morning. We still have summer here, so very warm outside. Oh, hi, Beth. Okay. Do you see me in the corner? I might have a little bit of a delay here, so. All right, we have people from Canada. Very excited. I usually have international audience at these live events, so it's so nice to be able to at least online chat with people from other countries. All right, I think everything is working. We'll just give people a couple more minutes to uh, get connected and we will get started. I'm very excited. We have beautiful subject today, very majestic lion that we'll be painting and we'll be talking about colors and i will i have a special offer for everybody as usual when i do those live events i try to do something special for everybody who participates so i'll tell you all about it in just a few minutes all right we have people signing up hi diane You'll find, I miss you here, but I'm glad you'll be able to paint finally with everybody. I hope you have your paint set out. Mm. All right, we have a few people from Canada. That's cool. Guys, and I'll tell you right away, I'll be trying to keep an eye on the live chat. And if you have questions, you can type them there throughout the broadcast. We're not, I'm not gonna take a lot of your time. I'm hoping to be done in about an hour. Uh, so type your questions, but I'm the only one in the studio today, so I will try to keep track of everybody's questions. But if I don't answer it, I'll go over everything one more time after I finish and I will answer everybody's questions. And of course you can reach me on social media and I'm everywhere online, so it's easy to find me. Yeah, no, I wish you were here too, Diane. <laughs> you always give me a lot of support during those um, live events, but I know you have a lot going on. All right. We have somebody from Maine, people from Arizona joining, more people from Houston. That's very exciting. All right, I hope everybody has their paints ready who plans on painting along with me. You don't really need a lot, just your usual watercolor supplies. And I'll tell you right away, guys, I will be using Derwent in Inktense pencils to finish my uh, artwork today. So if you have these, uh, these are water soluble pencils. The only difference between them and watercolor pencils is that they have ink. So once you draw with them, it's permanent. It's kind of hard to move the pigment. It's very intense. Uh, that's the name. Uh, if you have watercolor pencils, you can use those. Or if you have watercolor brush pens or markers, anything will work. It's just, 
I wanted to show you today a quick technique for creating animal paintings and uh, a liner tool will be one of the tools that will help us to move the artwork forward a little bit faster than just using watercolor. All right. Arlington, Virginia just joined us. Welcome, Joyce. Um, so exciting to see all, a lot of familiar names here. So I feel like, you know, I'm not talking to strangers, but to friends. All right, it's 10 o'clock, 10.01 actually. Let's get started. Um, welcome to Time Wrap Studio. Thank you for joining me today for this event. Uh, we will talk about painting animal portraits. Uh, and um, let's start by just looking at our reference photo. I think everybody um, saw it. Uh, I posted on online and in, in a few um, on Facebook and also you got some emails from me. So this is Unsplash. This is the reference photo that I thought would be fun to paint. It's just beautiful lion. Um, what can we do if we wanted to create a portrait of this beautiful animal? First thing we can do is of course to just look at the colors in the reference photo and try to match them with our pigments and transfer that to our watercolor paper, right? So that will be one way to go, which is perfectly fine. It will be a realistic painting. Uh, kind of my personal opinion about this is that this is a highly artistic photo. We have to use a reference photo, right? I personally don't have lions roaming the streets, so I can take a photo of them. Uh, maybe <laughs> where you live, it's easier. Uh, I don't know, but usually we use reference photos. And once the photographer took that photo and also you can tell it's been processed in Photoshop and this is kind of that photographer's artistic vision and um, we are artists we have our own vision right so maybe we don't want to just copy what we see in the reference photo we want to you know we have our own opinion and we want it to be our own artistic expression so I was thinking you know we could use this reference photo but put our own twist on it and put our own vision on it. So how can we do that uh, easily and kind of safeguard ourselves from failure? You know, we don't want to waste watercolor paper, right? So one way to go would be, what I like to do is convert the photo to black and white. So I eliminate color I only have form and I only have kind of tonal relationships in the photo, right? And that frees my mind and frees my eye from photographer's, um, photographer's vision. And it allows me to work more freely. So that is usually my suggestion when working uh, from reference photos and trying to pick colors is not to go by the color reference, but to use uh, black and white reference. And after we're done, we can compare with color and see, you know, it would be interesting to see at the end what we did differently, uh, what decisions were made during the painting process. Uh, in this printout, um, I photoshopped the original uh, color photo. I did a black and white filter on it. But if you don't have Photoshop, you don't actually need it. If you turn search, uh, saturation, you, uh, if you have the photo, you click edit and you turn saturation all the way down. It will become black and white and you can easily print it. And this serves dual purpose. So that frees me from the colors. It helps me to make my own color decisions. And also I can use it as a guideline to transfer the drawing on watercolor paper because, you know, I could draw this, but a little bit of help never hurts. Uh, I can just draw the eyes, the nose, and the mouth and have some sort of a reference to go by and make sure that my lion looks like a lion and I don't stray somewhere, you know. So if we think about a uh, color palette, um, I did a little sketch that I'm looking at the comments though. I wanna make sure that, you know, there, there's no pressing questions here, but I think we're all on the same page. Hi, Karen. She says, I'm in your area. Cool. All right. So I did 
a little color sketch when I was preparing for this broadcast. Um, and I was trying to jot down just some ideas what I could do um, about colors. Uh, I thought, let's start on the right. Kind of the first thing I was thinking, nothing wrong with just copying the photo in black and white, right? So this will be an excellent exercise, especially if we have a little bit of trouble with light and shadow. Uh, sometimes, you know, watercolors tend to look very flat and kind of uninteresting uh, because the darks are missing. So this would be an excellent exercise to just use one color and try to find all the light, mid-tone and dark areas on the lion. And that could be a very beautiful watercolor painting. What I like to do is maybe add one color as an accent. Obviously the eyes will be the focal point, right? So if I just use a little bit of lemon yellow or green or something like that for the eyes, that will make the painting pretty stunning. So that will be one way to go. If you wanted to try that sometime, I highly recommend that exercise. Another way to go would be to pick just a few uh, colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. Uh, these colors are called analogous, right? So if we stayed, let's say, within uh, the reds range and went from warmer reds to cooler ones, we can very easily and successfully paint this line to uh, as well. This is called analogous, uh, analogous palette. Um, and you see what I did here. So I used warmer reds for light and I used uh, cooler uh, reds for darker areas. If we think about how we show uh, three-dimensional objects on a flat sheet of paper, that's what we usually do, right? We use uh, warmer colors for lights and cooler colors for shadows. Sometimes you can do it the reverse. You can do cool lights and warm shadows, but they have to be opposite for the object to look three-dimensional. And that's what I did here. I did not use black. I did not use some other color. I just stayed within that red range. Can be yellow range, can be blue range, green, whatever you feel like doing. And I created uh, a painting. So that could be another interesting option for us. And the third option that I will tell you right away, this is my favorite, will be to use complementary colors. I know that lions are kind of tan orange color. So if I went with oranges, maybe yellows, uh, somewhere in this range on the color wheel for lights, how do I create shadows? The easiest way to create a shadow is to use a complementary color. The color that's on the other side of the color wheel from the, the main color that you're using. So if this is my primary um, yellow, so I would go into purple, right? So today I think we're going to try this complementary palette. It's my favorite. I very often use that approach. It does not have to be yellow and purple. It can be orange and blue. It can be red and green. It can be, sometimes I paint, um, I use opera pink and it really looks nice with turquoise. This is kind of red, right? And this is kind of green. So combinations are endless. The main thing is to understand that you, we're using the opposite colors. To show shadows, we're not using black or paints gray or anything like that. We are neutralizing our main color with its complementary. All right, and let's see if it works because, you know, don't take my word for it. We're going to try it. To start painting, I did not transfer the drawing yet. I feel it's a little restricting. Also, you can get a lot of lines and once you put watercolor on top of them, you can't erase anything. Um, I'm going to try to win it uh, and do the first watercolor wash just on a white sheet of paper. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, uh, that's fine. You can rub some charcoal on the back side or some soft graphite put it here and just transfer the lines. And I will be doing that in just a minute after I do the watercolor wash. Uh, but I'm going to try it just 
freehand. Let me situate my line right here. I'm going to spray my watercolors one more time with water and I'm going to give my paper a little spritz of water as well. This is Kilimanjaro, 300 pound paper, 600 grams. I like to use that thick paper and I'm going to use a big brush. So this is Princeton Heritage angle flat brush and it's an inch and a half. Advice for beginner watercolorists, don't be scared to use a big brush, right? Because it holds a lot of pigment, a lot of water. It will just, believe me, it will take a lot less effort for you to paint with it once you get used to it a little bit than using a tiny brush and tiny brush strokes. It's very hard to paint like that. All right, let me just check. Yeah, I think, oh, we have somebody even from Germany. Cool. I don't think anybody has any questions yet, so I will get, I'll start painting. So uh, I need to tell you guys, so what I'm going to do, uh, I see when I look at the black and white lion, I see that it has light areas, right? Like on the face, it has mid-tone areas, kind of transitions, and it has dark areas, like in the nose, it's very dark, and the hair, there are some dark areas. Uh, so the way I'm going to relate this to my colors is these three. So this will be light, mid-tone, dark mid-tone, and then darks will be uh, mixed with purple, right? We're going to neutralize the yellow with some purple because that's the complementary. Uh, if you don't have this many yellows, let's say you only have primary yellow, your lights will be that primary yellow diluted with water. And to get this color is very easy, right? Just a drop of red into your primary yellow and you can get this kind of light orange, all right? So don't worry if you, are, if you don't have all the colors that I have, just use the ones you have. All right, let's get started. Paint his face. We can actually, lemon yellow is so easy to lift and to even cover with other colors. We can even just give it a nice big wash with lemon yellow. Another reason I, I like to kind of start without a drawing is also that I can really be not kind of scared and use the colors with quite a bit of intensity. I like intense watercolors. I don't like kind of pale, kind of delicate watercolors. Some people do beautiful job with them, but I just, it's not my thing. So I like to paint pretty brightly. So you see what I'm doing, right? I applied that lemon yellow. Now I'm switching to slightly warmer yellow to paint light mid-tones. Looking at my line and kind of vaguely following the drawing. Don't worry about it. If something is not quite in the right place, we'll fix it later. You can lift, you can repaint. It's no big deal. And I'll tell you guys, I'm using the method of site measuring to paint this, to do this, to, to paint without the drawing. If you took my class on sketching people, I know some of you did. We talk about site measuring there quite a bit. It's a very useful technique and it's not hard to learn. So if you're interested, you can take a look on my website, ksenianis.com. Okay, I'm going to surround him. I decided that my darker areas will be based on this very warm yellow or kind of, uh, this is permanent orange actually, this pigment is called. So I am going to surround the line with this darker color, darker, warmer color, I should say. So just free flowing wash. Don't worry about it that it's, you know, not quite there, not right. Everything is correct. Whatever you do is it's good. And I'm going to spritz it with some water to make colors move. I feel that 
his cheeks are pretty pronounced maybe a little bit of an orange on the cheeks And if you learn to mix colors on paper instead of your palette, I think that will increase your kind of enhance your watercolors quite a bit because it just looks beautiful when colors mix on paper and they're not pre-mixed. Okay, so kind of vaguely something resembling the line. And this is a lot of brush strokes. Uh, what I'm going to do is grab a dry brush. It doesn't have to be this big or anything. You just need a soft dry brush and you can move the colors around too. So I'm going to just smooth this a little bit because it's, it looks like too much. Maybe a little more water. And if you have some white paper uh, showing in places, that's very good. Just don't try to cover every square inch of your painting. It's not necessary. White paper in watercolor is very valuable and it looks really good. Okay, so this I wanted this kind of soft, warm wash. That's all I wanted to create at this stage. I will show it to you a little bit closer. So it's very amorphous and vaguely following what I see in the reference photo. Let me actually pin my paper to my drawing board so it won't warp and move on me. All right, how are people who are painting doing? You're all doing okay? Let me know in comments if you have questions. See, it's already starting to warp and you have to be careful you can't touch the painted surface I'm using kind of the tips of my fingers uh, to pin it down okay what we need to do next is an interesting trick that I learned when I was learning to paint um, when we look at a face animal or person we just concentrate on the features, right? We just can't take our eyes. Like I, I'm, I keep looking at his eyes. I can't take my eyes away. So to help me evaluate what I have on paper compared to my reference photo, I'm going to turn the reference photo upside down and I'm going to turn my painting upside down. Let me move things around a little bit so I have a little more room here. So what I need to do is, this helps me to see this as shapes, light, mid-tone, and dark, instead of the features. And this way it will be easier for me to evaluate this wash and see if what I painted is correct or not. You can even paint upside down, but that's harder, so I don't want to make it too hard for everybody. But now that we have, we kind of got away from the face and we see the shapes better, I can evaluate the results. And I see that where the chin is, this area, here it's a little too much. So I need to lift some paint there and make it lighter. So let's do that. And lifting watercolor, you know, making corrections. People say, oh, you can't make corrections in watercolor. You can, it's harder than with other uh, mediums but it's possible you just scrub and you lift paint and we're going to paint his uh, what's it called the muzzle right his his uh, nose and the mouth and this is slightly lighter and this kind of goes I see that shape it kind of goes this way And it goes this way. Uh, his beard and stuff, we can we can lift a little bit, like on top here. 
but I'm also going to use opaque white uh, to add a little bit of detail. Maybe lift here a little bit. And let's see, so this is here. There are a couple of lighter areas here that we can mark. And also I see a couple lighter areas on this side. They're not super critical, but I'll lift paint there just so we can see, so not forget about them. And maybe on this side as well. This is very light, so we need to lift paint here. Okay, I think these are all corrections that I'm going to do. Maybe a few here as well. Okay. All right, now we need to let this sit a minute and dry before we can proceed, right? And um, while this is drying, let me guys tell you what I have prepared for you. So if I love painting animals, I just love animal portraits. That's one of my favorite subjects. And if you guys love them too, I have a class about uh, painting animals. It, it's called uh, Painterly Pet Portraits. Here's my high-tech link that, <laughs> that I printed out this morning. Uh, so if you guys go to my website, kseniaanis.com store, the, the store is on top on the menu there. Uh, I have a special going on in September and I'm giving everybody $100 off of this class. This class is uh, three hours of content. It's on demand. You can watch it at your own pace and uh, it's lifetime access. It will never expire. You, will, you can take as long as you need to uh, go through all the videos. And I'm teaching you to paint seven animals. It's seven demos. Uh, we talk about, uh, actually I'll show you. I have a few drawings here. So we talk about how to paint animals, how to paint the fur. There's a separate lesson on eyes and noses. I kind of explain how to do this, but mostly this class concentrates on color, kind of what we're doing today. I'm talking about different palettes, how to paint animals without copying the colors that you see in the reference photos and how to add your own artistic vision to those animal portraits. So this is one of the demos. Also, I explained how to paint this cute dog. This is another cute dog that we're painting there. I explained how to mix black from colors without using black pigments. And we paint these donkeys. So if you guys love animal portraits and would like to check that out, uh, uh, you will see the special offer on the store page. And if you click on it, you will see all the information about the class, the reviews, and there is also an um, intro video. So you can watch the intro and decide if that's something that that's for you or, you know, uh, just check it out. Uh, so the full price is um, $130, uh, $129.95, and I'm giving everybody $100 off, so it will be only $29.95. And I think for that big class and for seven demos, that's pretty good price. But it's only this month that we're doing this promotion. Alrighty, let's see what we have here. I don't have any shine on my photo, uh, on my painting, my photo. Um, it's still a little damp, but I think it will be fine if I continue working on it. Actually, let me show you something, guys. I bought this really neat tool. Um, it's called Heated Craft Tool. So it's like a little heat gun. Thank you, Diane, for recommending it. I went and grabbed it off of your Amazon uh, page. Uh, this is actually, let me turn it on. It's a lot quieter than the hairdryer. 
I would I was very reluctant to do watercolor videos because hair dry is so loud and you have to dry between the layers but this actually works just great I mean you can get a heat gun in a construction store like home supply store but you know it will burn your paper but this one is not too intense and it dries your watercolor very nicely and quickly so I started using this quite a bit you know it speeds up the drying time without burning your paper and without making a horrible racket so I'm going to dry this just a little bit and we will continue painting we're going to switch to our line tool so get that out get that ready make sure your pencil if you're using pencils that it's sharpened because we will continue working on this all right so what I want to do next is actually transfer my drawing and give myself a guideline. Yeah, this should be fine. So the way I transfer drawings, of course, I had to drip some paper on my reference, but it's okay. I am going to take a piece of charcoal, or you can take a soft pencil and just rub it. And I, I can see the lion's face, so I'll just rub it on that area because that's the most important for me, right? The, the mane, we can kind of wing it and figure out where things are, but I just would like to transfer the eyes and the, the nose. So a little bit of charcoal. Let's put this back on our watercolor paper. I printed this to size, so I would know how to match it, right? And if you don't have big uh, printer like I do, uh, you can just even print the face, right? And put it on there. And all I need, uh, I'll use my pencil, but you can use like the back side of the brush. You just need something to transfer the drawing. And this is not cheating because we're just using whatever tools we need to get the results that we need. And I know from an artist who even asked like international show, watercolor show judges, and they said they have no problem with uh, drawing being transferred um, on watercolor paper as long as you have the right to use that photo, right? Um, they have no problem with you transferring. I don't think I have charcoal there, but maybe I do. Okay, so this is all I wanted, just a little bit of a guideline. And now, um, if you guys need a little more, you can do a little more, a little more detail, but for me, this should be all right. Um, Okay, um, let's see. I don't see any questions, guys, so I guess we're all on the same page. You're all doing okay? Hopefully, hopefully everybody's having fun painting. All right, so uh, water-soluble pencil, Derwent Thick Pens. The color is dark purple, and I'm sure you understand now. I did not select that color randomly. Uh, purple is a complement of yellow, right? So I'm going to use uh, this color to neutralize uh, my yellows and to create shadows. So I'm going to be working on uh, dark midtones, darks, and uh, darkest darks, like the dark accents on the line. I keep looking at my black and white photo wh while I'm doing this because I'm not copying colors from the reference uh, if you don't want to use a pencil or you don't have watercolor pencils you can keep working with watercolor right so just pick a purple that you have on the palette whichever one you think will work or complementary color to what you have on paper already uh, and my only recommendation will be uh, let's try starting with the line. So take a small brush and pick up pigment directly from the well like with a lot of intensity and try applying it on paper because then I will be softening the lines. So I want you to be able to do kind of something similar. Usually we paint watercolor 
you know, layer by layer, but maybe today we can try something different. But basically any line tool can work. You can also use like a marker and even if it's even not water soluble, we will add purple watercolor later and you will get the similar result to what I'm hitting. All right, so I'm just going to basically draw my lion's face here. I'm looking at the black and white reference and I'm just applying that pigment that I have in the pencil to my watercolor. Okay, there will be a very dark area here on the bottom. And I'll show you some examples, guys, as well. I have some videos on YouTube, some additional tutorials if you're interested in this subject, specifically on this technique. Like, I'll tell you this is my favorite technique, definitely, and I use it quite a bit. And I think it's easy. Like I said, we're trying quick techniques because to paint this line with all the details with watercolor will obviously take quite a while. You know, it's a pretty complex form. A lot of little shadows going on here, a lot of lines, so it won't be super quick job, but we want just a fresh, spontaneous sketch and we want, we don't want to spend a lot of time maybe today. Maybe another time we can do a super realistic detailed um, painting of him. I'm also varying the pressure on the pencil to get different marks. You know, variety always looks good on paper. And um, so if you can, if your tool allows you to do that, just vary the marks a little bit. So he has some markings on the face here. Looks like a grumpy old man but he's beautiful at the same time. Okay, so he's got the mane, the, there are his ears, kind of we can see a little bit sticking out from his mane. So this will be his outline somewhere here. There will be another ear, they're pretty dark, darker than the mane, so we can add a little more color here, a little more pigment. There's a darker area here. So I'm trying very hard to stay away from drawing his, you know, every feature and every, his cute nose and mouth and everything, but to work with shapes, with tonal shapes. His paw is here somewhere. We can sketch that in real quick and another one is here. Okay. Alrighty, and now for the fun part is activating the water soluble pencil and adding tone. Uh, let's try to do first with clean water. Mine is, has a little bit of yellow in it, but it's pretty clean. Um, and then we will see, maybe we will add a little more water color. So once I activate that pencil, it softens the lines and it gives me that tone and that purple on top of my, you can see it especially here, on top of my uh, yellows and oranges, it neutralizes them and it creates that shadow color. So the deeper tone that I need that I see in the reference photo. So the magic of color theory that I teach in detail in my Painterly Pets class. Because, because we need it, because it works, you know. And the background behind him is very dark, uh, but I'll get to it in just a second. I'm going to do that with watercolor. I don't want to use that much of that uh, water soluble uh, pencil over there. Has very defined kind of lighter areas 
under his eyes and like I said I will be using a little bit of um, opaque white also as well his eyes are actually in shadow and I have them very lemon yellow so I'm going to drag a little bit of color onto them and add a little bit of shadow there And if you have too much of that um, ink tense uh, color on your brush, you can just rinse it, right? And get rid of it. Or good idea to always have a paper towel or just a piece of cloth or rag in your other hand. And that way you can control the amount of water and pigment that you are working with at all times. And if I need a little more, I can always add a little bit more color in certain areas okay let's move on don't want to concentrate on one area too much liner tool will also be good see how he has those um, whiskers so this will be very easy to do with the line tool as well just some little bit of hatching here and this is all darker under his chin and on the sides of his face. And it's dark under his chin. It might not be dark enough because I lifted a uh, color there, so it might not be dark enough. But I have my watercolors. I'm not worried. I can always add a little more tone if I need to. Like I said, in watercolor we work with layers, so you want to more or less gradually build your painting. Don't jump in super dark all at once. It's usually not a good idea. It might lead to some problems. Okay, let's see. So, there's his face. The dark kind of comes right up to his eyes. And he looks weird because his nose is very dark, but it's not dark in my painting, so I need to paint his nose. And I need to paint his mouth. And you can lift ink tents while it's still wet, but once it's dry, it's just gonna stay there. So we need to work fairly, fairly quickly here. So this dark line of the mouth connects to the dark area here on this side and on this side as well. So we're going to drag some pigment there. Okay, and this is all going to be dark, it's soften. And I really like guys, I don't know about you, but I really like how pencils create additional texture on paper. Um, I think it, it adds a lot of visual interest to watercolors, so I'm not worried about leaving these marks and covering them or anything, because I think we can, contrast them with smoother areas and it looks really attractive and really interesting for the viewer so i'm all for that kind of mixed media effect all right so we've done this now i'm going to take a smaller brush and i'm going to add a little more color so i used a dark purple so i'm trying to think which color will be best I think ultramarine violet will actually be a good color for me uh, to go with. It will, I mean, it will match the pencil best. So this will be the closest. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add darkest accents. Uh, I have some, but some areas need a lot more, a little bit more work, not a lot more work. Uh, and to see those areas, to kind of, again, I'm evaluating the result and I'm trying to decide what else I need to do. 
and to evaluate the result better I'm going to squint when I'm looking at my painting and then squint when I'm looking at the reference photo. I can see that some things are not quite right, so I'm going to fix them now at this stage uh, with watercolor. And notice that I'm not putting watercolor on my palette, I'm not mixing it with water. I wet the brush and I'm picking watercolor straight from the well because I want that intensity. And if it's too much, I can always grab a clean brush with some clean water on it and soften it or lift it. So that's the way I'm going to do this. So I see a very dark area on his ear, right here, and this. I could have done it with pencil, but I mean, I have watercolor as well, so I want both on my painting. So that's what I'm going to do. And you see, I'm softening that area. Here's that hair sticking out. So we can do that. So the trick is to do just enough for people to understand what you're trying to say here, but not overwork it, right? We all have that problem. We just paint and paint and paint, and then like, we decide that it's a little too dry, a little too overworked, and it's hard to go back. So working with layers gradually and evaluating your result, like I said, squinting and looking is a good idea. And it kind of will help you to be more successful. And I'm guilty as anybody, you know, I try to fix stuff and then it's like, why did I do this? This is just not right. And you just have to start over very often. Okay, so the top looks better. It's darker maybe here as well. This is a dagger brush, I didn't tell you guys. This is a dagger brush, quarter range, my favorite. Very versatile, you can paint with it flat or you can paint with it on, on the edge. So that's why I love it so much. It helps me to do a lot of things that I need to do with just one brush. His cheeks need to be darker, so I'm going to just apply watercolor here. How are the painters doing? You're all, I guess you're not talking to me because you're all painting. But hopefully you'll show me your paintings after you're done. Um, here's my social media, Tamir Up Studio with two B's in Tamirab. So if you post, make sure you tag me or tag Xenia Anis and so I can see your paintings. I'm really curious what everybody is doing, how, what materials you're using, what your line is going to look like. We can all have maybe share some ideas, you know, and share information about different materials, what worked and what didn't, it will be interesting. Okay, his nose is actually not black, not all black, right? So we need to leave some of it lighter and fill in some, like in the nostrils, it's very dark. If you know, especially if you squint, you will clearly see it. It's very dark in the nostrils and kind of on the outside, but it's lighter. Um, the, fr the front of it, that flat area is lighter. Okay, and let's do this cheek. I feel like his eyes need to be a lot darker, maybe slightly larger. Correct the pupil a little bit. Make sure they're in the right place and they're the right shape because you know transferring is all is very helpful but it might not be very precise so we still need to look and um, make sure we you know we were doing things right okay He's got very pronounced markings under the eyes here. This can be even darker. 
we all know right that watercolor lightens after it dries so we need to go a little more intense with it then we want it to look after it's dry okay and um, another thing I want to do maybe soften this a little bit I'm going to put this painting guys on my store Tamirab studio you can find the link on my website xenianis.com so if you want it you can have it because it will be it will be there for sale okay and let's see there's dark area here see how because these areas they're not super dark they're kind of mid-tone i switched back to my orange so don't think that you know you can go back to the color that you need right we can do whatever we need to do so this is light so i used the yellow there's the dark area but the nose is kind of middle tone so i'm going to darken it just a little bit it actually looks much better let's see the cheeks i think are fine now maybe a little bit of orange to connect the cheeks to the mane kind of take it into the mane a little bit and you can see here guys why i tell you only use small brush for details see i'm trying to paint smaller areas with it i really should switch to a bigger brush by now uh, it's just hard because it doesn't hold a lot of paint and water so you constantly have to pick it up i'm going to take a bigger brush this one is uh, three quarters of an inch and it's also angled these are now my favorite brushes i paint almost everything with them so darken his beard a little bit and let's tone down the area around him because i like how he has that darker tone there so i'm just going to give it a little bit of a purple wash and because i'm working transparently it mixes with my underpainting with that um, orange that I uh, permanent orange that I painted underneath and that pushes the background away from us right and the focal point the line lines face starts coming forward and that's what we want because that's the main subject of our painting and maybe here on the bottom we can tone it down a little bit too i have that sort of an outline down here so it gives me a little bit of a guideline okay tap this down as well all right here we go we're almost done this is our line i'm going to let him dry for just a sec i'll show you some other examples of this technique that i have let's see <laughs> yes he's kind of starting to look at us yeah he keeps best says he keeps appearing on paper with each brush stroke all right like i said guys this is not hyper realistic painting um thank you all for nice comments it's really nice to, that you're enjoying this demonstration i was a little nervous about it but um, this is not hyper realistic painting but if you like that style that kind of more free flowing then um you know that's the way to go for sure all right let me show you some other artwork that i did in this style so Here's another big cat, uh, the um, leopard. So that was painted with um, Daniel Smith's uh, secondary set. Uh, and then I added a little bit of uh, Dervent. Uh, and um, a little bit of uh, opaque white to it. So this will be, and this photo is by the way, is also from Unsplash, so it's a free photo. Um, so this will be kind of another uh, this is more monochromatic, I would say, monochromatic color scheme. 
Uh, so this will be another interpretation of this of this subject. Uh, I have these dogs. They're more colorful. Also, just a free flow in watercolor wash. You see how I kind of dropped some paint here and there and then I found the dogs with pencils and with a little bit of um, what else I used yeah I went back to watercolor and also found some precision in the dogs as well all right and some of you painted these guys so you might recognize them right we did this um, event live you can find it here on YouTube on my channel as well um, so this to cute llamas, the technique is the same. We created a free-flowing watercolor wash and we found some precision in it with some pencils. Okay, this little fox. I know, Diane, that's your favorite, right? It's like cute little fox cub looking at us. Again, this is uh, just um, a Dervant secondary set with a little bit of yellow added and some uh, color pencils. And we also did this one all together, right? With the sheep, you saw that demonstration. I used some salt to give them texture, but the principle is the same. Free-flowing watercolor wash with some pencil. And I'll just show you this example, guys. Uh, this is using uh, brush pens, markers, uh, not water-soluble too, but it still works, right? So I just threw some watercolor on and I just found a few darker areas. I squinted when I was looking at the reference photo and I found just few darker areas um, in those sheep. And that's all you need to do to make it look like, you know, finished painting. Um, I forgot to mention guys in that class uh, that I'm giving everybody discount on painterly pet portraits. I also teach you this technique. This is another demo from the class. Uh, where I use, I call it rainbow fantasy palette. So just absolutely random colors, but they create a realistic painting. And we will talk about this technique a little more. I have some more examples here. Uh, this tutorial is on my channel, you can watch it. So just rainbow colors, very fun, uh, very cheerful and bright. This guy is painted with this technique. Uh, I'm going to have more of these YouTube lives throughout September, next Saturday and the following Saturday. And that colorful kind of impressionist technique, I will be showing uh, last Saturday of uh, September, uh, I think it's the 24th, but we'll be painting with gouache. So if you want to know more about gouache, it's much easier medium than watercolor, then join me for the demonstration. We'll be painting colorful horse. And next Saturday, we'll be working on cats. So I have a little sketch that I prepared. We will be talking about shapes. Like we said, we turn the photo upside down to see the shapes. We need to capture not the features, but the shapes. So I will be showing you an exercise how to learn how to see shapes and not objects. And that will, you know, that will take your painting to a totally different level if you practice and learn to do this. So next Saturday, we'll do this cute cats. All right, last thing I need to do to my lion is to add the highlights. So if we look at our black and white reference, um, these areas, I try to leave them light, but it can use a little bit more definition, right? And like under the eyes, I had some paint run over. So it's not quite as bright as I see in the reference photo. It's not super bright here, but I think a little bit of white can really help us bring that line to life. And he also has a tiny highlights in the, on his pupils. So I want to add that as well. And my favorite, I pick white that I think looks best with watercolor. These days is uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's pen white. This is opaque white ink. It's light texture. It kind of blends with the paper and with the watercolor very well. I used to use um, white gouache, but white gouache kind of sits on the surface and you can see it. This I think blends a lot better. So I just use it with a brush from the bottle. I try to keep the brush clean so I don't contaminate my ink. 
so make sure I rinse the brush real well and we really need just a tiny drop you can even put it on your palette so you don't dip you know ten times once you pick up the watercolor on your brush so I'm going to just add again squint when you look at the reference photo and add a bit of a highlight just a little bit maybe in the eyes he has kind of lighter patches here above his eyes maybe a few we can you know even add some more texture with this because we can kind of brush it on with light brush strokes and of course here on his muzzle these are the lightest areas and we can give him whiskers see what I can do with that dagger brush I can paint very fine lines with it but I can also paint slightly larger areas this can be blended a little bit very sophisticated technique painting with my fingers smudging things with fingers okay let's see he has a little bit of lighter area here kind of very pronounced cheekbones and maybe a few highlights in the mane won't hurt okay, going over his ears and everywhere And in his beard, right? We can kind of surround our focal point a little bit better with highlights. Okay. Um, I feel like I need a little bit on his beard. Let me do that just real quick. We have a couple more minutes. Yeah, just define his beard a little bit better, maybe blend it. Yeah, I think that's that's good. That's all we need to do. Highlight his nose a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> and always sign your artwork if it turned out good and you like it. and here's our lion all right guys let me check your comments lots of thank yous uh let's see yeah diane says she set up both events in the group um kilimanjaro 300 pound papers you go to paper for this technique so you, yes uh i know those heavy weight papers i get more and more expensive i don't know what's going on but the price keeps going up but if you want the intensity of color and you hate warping so this is the way to go and the way not to waste this paper first of all you can paint on both sides so if you messed up something just turn it over and start again it's not it's not warped uh, you can work on the back side with no problem at all and of course if you prepare like I did a little sketch to figure out your colors to figure out your composition it's always helpful so that helps you to save paper I know we sometimes get you know nice block of paper and it's like oh I don't want to waste it and I'm not ready to paint on it just do some preparation work kind of get your mind set straight right and just go for it um, so if I painted on you can paint this on 140 pounds it will probably be okay uh, but it's just harder it you're not gonna get intense colors and it's gonna warp um, so yeah 300 paper is definitely my preference <laughs> yeah th this line is so handsome uh, Beth there is no discount code for the class if uh, it's already discounted for everybody uh, in September so just go to xenianis.com slash store and scroll down just a bit it's a big red banner uh, orange banner sorry <laughs> the color of the lion uh, you will see it and it's uh, already discounted to 29.95 and um, you click on the 
picture of the on the cover of the class and watch the preview to make sure that's that what you want uh, that that's the class for you uh, and also I forgot to mention that with this class you get access to my community so you can post your artwork that you do after you watch the videos and I'm constantly monitoring that forum and I will be in, I can answer questions I can give you a gentle critique of your artwork if you need me to so we are connected. It's not like, you know, you buy the class and you're on your own, do whatever you want. I'm, I'm there to help you. So uh, throughout September 2995 for this class, $100 off. And if you want to post your paintings on social media, Time Up Studio, just tag me and I'll be happy to take a look at them as well. I know Diane has that um, wildlife challenge going on in Watercolor Beginners and Beyond group. So this will be a good subject for the challenge as well. And maybe you will win some prizes there on, on Facebook. All right. Last check of the comments. Um, thank you guys so much for such nice comments. And um, let's see. Um, Kilimanjaro on 140 pounds on a block. That's fine. That will work. And blocks are much better. You know, they hold the paper straight. It doesn't warp so much. Um, that will be fine for this technique as well if you don't want to go with, with 300 pounds. I buy 300 pound paper in full sheets 22 by 30 inches and then I cut it up and I think it's actually comparable to those blocks because blocks are kind of expensive. They have to put the cover on them and that silicone that holds them together. So look into 300 pound uh, sheets of paper, not blocks or pads. I think you might get a pretty good deal online. Alrighty. Uh, I'll go through the comments one more time and make sure I answer everybody. But thank you guys so much for being here with me today. For Thank you for watching this. Thank you for all the nice comments. And I'll see you next Saturday here in Tamarab Studio on my channel. Don't miss the next demonstration about painting uh, shapes of cats uh, or line and wash cats. So that's what we'll be doing next time. All right. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.